Hi everyone, we're here today at St. Andrews in Greensboro to tell you a little bit about a special project that we all engaged in last summer and that we're hoping you will find useful to you. I'm Marissa and I'm from Holy Comforter in Burlington. And I'm Audra and I'm from St. Andrews in Greensboro. I'm Amanda and I'm from St. Francis in Greensboro. I'm Sarah, I'm from St. Mary's in High Point. This gave us a chance to come together and share some of our respective ideas and then hear her vision. As we're talking about going into Galilee, she wanted us to look at what we do and bring it out into the world. Not in a context of trying to recruit people or evangelize to get them just in the door, but to share our message and our resources and what we were doing in more of a social justice context. She identified a specific community, um, the Hispanic community in Haw River. So once we identified the community in Haw River, which is around St. Andrews, it's a small parish uh, where the BBS would be held, we had to ask the question, how are we going to get the word out? Uh, we could see this happening in two ways. If the, if the parish where they want to have the VBS is already having some sort of relationship with their neighborhood, it could be through a meal ministry or what have you, that would set up a, a really great opportunity to then offer to the parents and the families there this, this thing for the summer. In our situation, it turned out that St. Andrews didn't have a lot of um, a lot of a relationship with their neighbors. They had established a community garden a year before that, which did provide an entree. Uh, but really, what we started doing about mid-spring is go around knocking on doors and meeting people and saying, "Hey, we're here. And by the way, here's a little flyer. We're thinking of doing a VBS in the summer." And we, didn't, we did it just to show them our faces because establishing trust when, when relationships hadn't been built up is, was one of the primary goals for that first time around. This is all about establishing a relationship. What we, what we, one thing I want to share that we learned is that we had several times asked a lot of the families, so how is 9 to noon? And they said, oh, that's great. You know, a lot of kids are home in the summer. Uh, day one, um, 9 o'clock came around and nobody showed up. And, 9.30, and so Miriam and I kind of went out and started knocking on doors, and that's when we learned that most kids really don't wake up till 10. In the process of building a relationship, it's almost more about our face time and knowing each other and building up the trust that, that can only be built by showing up again and again and showing that we're here, we care. One of the things we thought about a lot as we were planning this and realizing in this context that St. Andrews and Miriam, were, they were kicking off a relationship uh, with their neighborhood. Uh, uh, one of the great uh, spirit-filled aspects of this story is that though there weren't a lot of neighborhood participants in the VBS itself, only a month later they started doing an after-school homework help, which eventually parents started coming to to help with ESL and filling out papers. Uh, it did kick off the relationship. We could, so sure. one of the things that we forgot to mention <laughs> is that this community is primarily Spanish speaking yes. and it is primarily um, immigrants. So we had both a cultural and a language divide sure. and a barrier. And, and for the most part, parents spoke Spanish only and kids were, a most mix. of them, mixed mm -hmm. um, bilingual. One of the other cultural differences is a reluctance to say no or act um, or, or in any way not be going along with a stranger, particularly someone who's in a position of more social power. So when we asked questions like, so how is nine o'clock versus three in the afternoon? They said, I mean, they said it was fine and I think it was fine, but they were, they were he probably hesitant to say no, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Day one, when I talked about when nobody showed up at nine, we started going and knocking on doors. Uh, we ended up knocking on the door of the, the, the landlord of the trailer park, and he was not very welcoming and not very happy that we were there and told us not only to get off of his property, but to not knock on any more doors. What that alerted us to was a dynamic within the neighborhood, which was probably, there was, it's a fairly threatening environment to live in for the tenants. And what we also learned from the first parent who came was that the, the police are often called to just patrol the area. Mm -hmm. And it sets up an, an atmosphere of mistrust and, and reluctance to step onto the, the church bounds, which are right there by their homes, because the police might give them trouble as if they're trespassing. That's part of what establishing the relationship was about, is getting to know what it was like to live in that neighborhood for the residents there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some of that had to do with overcoming the, the language barriers, some of it had to do with um, overcoming the cultural barriers, and also power, power dynamics and power differences that we may not have perceived at first. 
I think that one of the big things is that our theme was welcoming the stranger. Um, and while we certainly did that in our different activities, the things that we learned was that were around the area uh, how we needed to be welcoming our neighbors here. So there were some things like what you're talking about with the dynamics. There were some things such as um, we thought we should have probably had the welcome had a welcome dinner or a welcome lunch as opposed to an end of the year celebration, which yeah. might be more traditional in some of our parishes. But because they don't know the families don't know us because they're sending our chil their children to us, we need to be open and available from the start. So having a, a large community meal or something like that where they get to know us and and remove some of that stranger barrier. Likewise, um, we... So when the four churches got together to try to plan what we were going to do, we organized it in a way that would be um, not putting too much burden on any one person, which was wonderful. It, it made it um, accessible for small parishes to all participate together and everybody was able to bring something to the table without feeling overwhelmed. Um, so one of the ways that we did this is we chose a theme that all of us would then use at our own churches for a vacation Bible school or a day camp of some sort. Um, and so we could use the activities that we were already planning and using at our own church for this additional project. We also shared a lot of resources. Uh, the first resource that we all shared together was the grant that we received from the Chartered Committee for Lifelong Christian Formation. And that was a thousand dollar grant that was given to us um, to use for supplies. And so we used that you know, together and made decisions together as far as craft supplies and um, a souvenir for the VBS kids to take home, which was a backpack. Um, snacks and other assorted things that we needed came out of that grant. And so we were able to share that financially. Um, and like Sarah mentioned, we also shared our resources as far as the theme goes. We worked together to come up with that. Um, we worked together to come up with the stories that would fit into the Welcoming the Stranger theme. Um, and so one person would be in charge of stories for the whole week, and one person was in charge of music for the whole week, and one person was in charge of games for the whole week. And we each had our responsibilities, but we all helped one another with each, of, with each of those stations. Yeah, and it was also really great to be able to share ideas and hear other people's perspective on the same story that you were going to use at your vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. um, it just gave a, additional ideas, additional games. I know we passed around um, games a whole lot, um, and I know some of those were used back at, back at our individual churches mm -hmm. um, later in the summer. So even though we all are at churches that are up to an hour or more apart from each other, um, we made this possible with only meeting in person two different times. Um, so we worked through email, but a lot through conference calls. Um, and we would set a specific amount of time to get our work done, and whatever we didn't finish, we would set another conference call. Um, so it wasn't an overwhelming amount of time that we were spending together in planning or in person. We had a great time working together and it was a really good experience for us. Um, there are a few things that we want to recommend or think about as we go forward. Uh, one of the big things is that we want to make sure that if we do this again or for those of you that might be considering doing this, don't be constrained by boundaries. In, in addition to not being constrained by geographical boundaries, so the, the boundaries between ministry with children and youth and outreach and mission uh, got opened up mm -hmm. in a really exciting way that's been fruitful for members here at, in Parish in Greensboro. They're already asking again, are we doing this again? Mm -hmm. Get to know who are the neighborhood leaders, who are the parents that the other families perhaps look up to, who are the, who are the adults who may already be uh, participating in some way in the life of that parish church or at least coming onto the grounds, really working with them ahead of time to let them know what's going on, make sure they know the, the information and pay attention to what questions they ask. It's probably mm -hmm. the same questions that others are not going to ask you for whatever reason. Uh, um, in addition to the grant that I mentioned from the Charter Committee for Lifelong Christian Formation, I also want to mention diocesan support. Um, they have lots of supplies and resources for you to call on and use. Um, so I encourage you to utilize the diocese. And if you don't know if they have it, ask them. They might be able to help you. Um, and I know that they'll try to help you in any way that they can. Absolutely. Um, and we are also good resources. Um, if you have any questions, you can let us know. Our contact information will be um, posted below this video. So please ask us further questions about our experience and how you could do something similar. Thank you.
Go team! <laughs> <laughs>